the way we'll start is we'll start with, uh, why don't we make it three minutes of just kind of a general speech, and then we'll start asking questions. That would be good. Yes. Thank you. So ladies first. Three minutes? Where'd she go? Here you are. You're going to need to speak to the microphone or they won't hear you. Are you on three minutes? Yes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. Okay. I'll be showing you this. Okay. Well, good evening, Progressive Caucus. <laughs> I want to thank you all and uh, Michael for the invitation to, uh, to address all of you this evening. Last Tuesday, we had an election. That election did not turn out quite as some people may have thought it did. I have a really good friend that says that mirrors are like elections, and elections are like mirrors. And what we saw looking back at us last Tuesday uh, was not a pretty sight. And what I would posit to you all this evening is that one thing, one important thing we should take away from last Tuesday is that our Democratic Party is at a crossroads. Our Democratic Party is not as progressive as we thought it was. Our Democratic Party is not as pro-woman as we thought it was. Our Democratic Party is not as pro-immigration as we thought it was. And you know what? Our Democratic Party is a lot more racist, more sexist, more xenophobic, and more homophobic than we thought it was. Yep. I want to share with you all that the race for who will be the next chair of the California Democratic Party is not about Eric Bauman, and it's not about Kimberly Ellis. The race for who will be the next chair of this party is about all of you in this room tonight. It is about where we are as a party, what we stand for, what our values are, what we are willing to stand up and fight for. That is what this race is about. Let me be very clear, the line has been drawn in the sand. I am running to bring a new voice a new vision, and a new perspective to this party. Yeah. Yeah. For far too long, the Democratic Party has taken the people for granted. This party, as it stands today, is not the party of the people. It is time for us to be able to have difficult conversations with each other and to tell hard truths. And I'm here to tell a hard truth tonight, and that is that today the California Democratic Party is owned and operated and run by Sacramento, the legislature, and big money, big oil, big tobacco, and big pharma. It is time for the Democratic Party to give the party back to the people, and that is what I'm here to fight for. Thank you. was wearing it first, right? Just give me just a second. It has been for Kimberly and me both a very long day. We started early this morning and it's gone on all day. So I guess John Burton's Democratic Party is a party of the right wing. I guess John Burton's Democratic Party is a party of big oil and is a party of all of the things we just heard. And I guess the election results in California, where we restored the two-thirds majority in the assembly, and we're just 187 votes away from having the two-thirds majority in the Senate. Didn't really happen. I guess that's all fantasy. I guess the fact, I guess the fact, please let me speak without being rude. I guess the fact that Hillary Clinton got the most votes of any Democratic 
nominee for president in California history, California didn't really happen. So let me tell you what, so let me tell you, so let me tell you what really is going on here. Okay, we can have all the slogans we want, and we can make it sound as pretty as we want, but California leads the nation, and everybody across America is looking to us because we won so big last Tuesday. My call to action was very clear. I called on Governor Brown and our legislative leaders to use our Constitution and our statutes and our laws to protect all those people who the orange-faced monster will disenfranchise with his Supreme Court and his Attorney General and his administration. That a woman's right to choose becomes sacrosanct in California no matter what the Supreme Court does. That the right to marriage equality is sacrosanct no matter what the Supreme Court does. That the right for every child to have a free, high-quality public education is sacrosanct in America. And health care for all is not dependent on one's status, financial or immigration. And that all of those young people who signed up for DACA and all of those people who signed up for DAPA, whose names are on lists, that California agencies would not be obligated to turn those over. That's what this is about. You know, I've been coming to this caucus since it was created. I have been a leader in this party for more than 20 years. I have spoken at every caucus. I have met with people up and down this state, and I have campaigned everywhere. I didn't just get here. And you know what? And you know what? It's okay. I'm a big boy. We have a lot in front of us that we can do. But I can tell you what, I can tell you what, we're going to win together. And when I am the chair of the California Democratic Party, the Progressive Caucus and its agenda will be at the top of our agenda. Because these are the things that we've all been fighting for for years and years and years. So thank you very much. Here's the first question. What do you believe is the purpose of the caucuses? So would you like to go first? You know, there's long been an effort within party leadership to try to end caucuses. You all know that. There's been an effort to make it difficult. But I have always had a very simple belief that the caucuses represent the best place and the best opportunity for us to come together either around an issue, an identity, or some belief system that's so important. Where we can come together and talk about the things that matter and collectively within those groups, put our opinions together and share them with the party at large and with the party leadership. That is something I have fought for, something I have stood for, and something that I believe in because I believe it's so incredibly important. When you have a party with nearly 3,000 delegates in it, it's very hard to hear from everybody. When you have a party that is as diverse as the Democratic Party in California, it's very hard to hear from everybody. But these caucuses provide us a critical window into that. And I stand 100% four square behind the caucus system. And I won't slide from that no matter what happens. Thank you. So first, I'd like to address a, a narrative that's being painted about me for quite a while. Uh, let's just be clear, I did not just get here, okay? Uh, what people need to understand is I've been working for the last 10 years through Emerge to recruit and train women and women of color to run for and win elected office, okay? I have trained over 400 women here in the great state of California. Half of them have already run for office. 70% of them have won their elections, including last Tuesday. I am proud that 
Emerge women look like California. 56% of them are women of color. I think the idea that I have just arrived on the scene, the idea that I'm just moseying in, really underscores a hard truth that I'm going to talk about tonight. And that is that as a woman, and a black woman, a woman of color, it's not that I just arrived. It's that you are just now noticing me. I have been invisible this entire time. Don't get it twisted. I have been a registered Democrat for 25 years, and I have voted in every election. I have fallen in line. I have given this party blood, sweat, and tears. I did not just arrive. I have been here all along, OK? Secondly, I think that it's not enough to have things just in name only. It's great that we have 19 different caucuses, and that looks fine and good on paper. But let's talk about the fact that the reality of it is that it is just on paper. These caucuses don't have as much teeth as I think they need to have. One of the things that I would like to do as chair is to, in the, in the spirit of democratizing the Democratic Party, in the spirit of bringing more people in, in the spirit of making sure that everybody's voice is heard, I want to make room on the important and big committees, the resolutions committee, the rules committee. I want to make sure that we have representation from our caucuses on those standing bodies. It is important that we do that. Having something on paper and name only is not enough. I'm from, originally I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I live up in the great city of Richmond, and there's something that we say, a saying that we have in the hood. And that is, don't talk about it, be about it. It's time for this party to start being about it for the people. This time you can go first, uh, Kimberly. Here's a question. What will you do to engage disenfranchised California Democrats and former Democrats, I might say, many of whom are in this room. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So I uh, was a Hillary Clinton supporter. And what I will share with you is this. I am so grateful for Senator Sanders and everything that he brought to the conversation that needed to be talked about. That is the democratic process. That is what democracy is all about. If people feel like that they, sh they want to lead, they should have that opportunity to throw their hat in the ring. One of the reasons why I decided to run for chair is because I had two women, two African-American women, sisters from LA County, invite me out for lunch and to deliver a message to me. And that message was something like this. Who the hell do you think you are? No one gave you permission to run for this office. If you run, it will be political suicide. We know you know how to fundraise. So we would advise you take that little chit and you go and ask Eric if he will give you one of the vice chair seats. But as far as running for chair of the party, politically speaking, you will be murdered and we will personally take part in murdering you. That, my friends, is not the California Democratic Party I thought I was. And that, my friends, is what this is about. So I want to make sure that all of the Bernie supporters, all of the people who left this party, all of the people who are not Democrats tonight, I want you to know this party belongs to all of us, all of you. I want to invite everybody in. I plan to tour this entire state starting in January. This will be my full-time job, to visit as many of you as I can to share with you my vision. This party is our party, each and every one of us. It's stunning to hear that people would have said that to Kimberly. Because that is anti-small-D Democratic and anti-big-D Democratic. And those of you who know me know I don't play that way. So let me say this. I have been touring California for years. See, the reason they know me in Siskiyou and Shasta and Kings County and Tulare and Fresno and Riverside and Ventura 
is because when nobody in party leadership thought those places were important and thought those people mattered, I did. I had nothing personal to gain from it, but here's what I believed. It's really easy to be a Democrat when you're from LA. It's really easy to be a Democrat when you're from San Francisco or Alameda, Contra Costa, even San Diego. It's not so easy for when you're from those places. And I have always believed that our democratic activists in those places work twice as hard with one-tenth of the reward. And I take that to this day with me in everything I do. You know, in the last 30 days of the election, I made 55 campaign stops. Those of you who follow me on Twitter and Facebook have seen the pictures. I did that because I saw people working their hearts out, not just to help us win in California, but to help us win in Nevada, and Arizona, and Florida, Colorado, and Ohio, and Wisconsin, because that's who I am. And let me tell you, I've never been afraid of a fight, and I have never and would never say to somebody, you don't have a right to run. Kimberly Ellis brings extraordinary qualities to this race, and she deserves respect for that. And I would hope that not one of my supporters would ever say that to her. No matter whether I believe or why I believe I'm more qualified for this position, I would never accept that. And here's the thing. We Democrats have one thing. We stand together believing that people come first. We stand together believing that we have to take care and provide and make sure that everybody is taken care of and has the resources available to have a successful opportunity in life. That's what makes us Democrats. And you know what? We're allowed to disagree. I used to say during the campaign, I don't care if you feel the burn or if you climb the hill. When it comes right down to it, we need to come back together and make sure we win. None of us imagined, none of us imagined the tragedy that would befall us last Tuesday. And while, and while, and while we're fighting, and while we are fighting and dealing with our internal little warfare here, I got news for you. There's a Supreme Court that's going to affect all of our lives for a long time to come. So my friends, we better find our way together. We better find a way to stand up. We better find a way to shine. We better find a way to lead. We better find a way to represent because people all over America are looking to us for that. I'm going to ask the elephant question of Eric first. And I'll just hand it to you. Oh, he'll read it. Will I pledge not to take money from the pharmaceutical industry as party chair? It's an elephant question. That wasn't the question. Let him address the question. It's elephant. So let me answer the question this way. First of all, not all things are as they seem. And there's nobody in this room that doesn't understand that sometimes things get reported in a way that's less than factual. That having been said, a consultancy in which I'm a partner for three months did business with pharma. I never at any time gave one speech, had one conversation, wrote one article, made one phone call, or asked any delegate ever 
to vote for or against Proposition 61. And that is a fact. That is a, that is a fact. And to imply that I did is patently false. Furthermore, when people put out a distorted email that said Bauman caught in the web of corruption as if I had violated some state law, if you saw the article in the Sacramento Bee, which has not been circulated by people, where the Speaker of the California Assembly made clear that any client that I had was cleared by the Ethics Commission, I'm sorry, the Ethics Committee and the Legal Counsel of the State Assembly. Having said that, in that same article in the Sacramento Bee five months ago, I said if I become the chair of the party, I can't, it's a full-time job with a full-time salary. I cannot, Hillary, I have a right to earn a living. I do have a full-time job. But I would suggest you, you don't heckle me, please. Because otherwise I would ask you, how come we're under investigation for money laundering and you're the controller of the CDP? Okay, so that's a fact reported in five newspapers. So, so, let's be clear. I do not believe the California Democratic Party should take money from oil. I don't think we should take money from pharma. I supported Susie Shannon's disclosure motion from the moment she conceptualized it, without question. In fact, the only reason anybody even knew that my consultancy had been paid by pharma was because I disclosed it. Those of you who know me know I'm a pretty open guy. I'm a pretty direct guy. Yes, I'm a prize fighter from the Bronx, so I'll always spar. But when it comes to fighting for what's important for people in this state and in this country, I have never shied away. I have been fighting the battle for single-payer health care for more years than about a third or half of the people in this room are even alive. I have been fighting to topple the insurance industry and the pharmaceutical industry for more years than most. And you see, I've done it as a healthcare professional, as a clinician, as an administrator, as a consultant, and as a regulator. See, what you probably don't know about me is I'm a registered nurse. I spent many years doing trauma and emergency and intensive care in urban inner city poverty hospitals. I then went into hospital administration and then into consulting. And then I became the deputy insurance commissioner of this state. And I fought those insurance companies every single day. When it comes to health care, nobody can, can, can challenge, you'll have to forgive me, my mouth is very dry right now. Nobody can challenge my credentials on this issue. And I stand firmly in belief that a universal single payer system, Medicare for all, should have been enacted three years or four years ago, should have been enacted when I served on President Clinton's health care reform task force, should have been enacted when President Truman first called for it in 1953 or 52, whatever it was. Bill, remind me, I can't remember that far back anymore. So, I'm quite clear about what I will do. R.L. Miller didn't have to go far in talking to me about banning oil contributions to our party. Because I think it's despicable. And I think our party should stand up and speak out and live by its words. And you know, our so-called campaign finance reform laws that have passed have not made things better for us. They've benefited the wealthy. They've benefited the corporations. They have damaged the parties 
and they have damaged grassroots activists. So until we repeal Citizens United, until we overturn the Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act, until we implement 24-hour reporting of every contribution and every expenditure within $100 or more within 24 hours, until we do that, we're not going to regain our country. And the worst part of Citizens United, the worst part about it is, these billionaires can do it in secret. And they don't have to report who's contributing. So it takes a lot of money to run races. It takes a lot of money to win races. And there's only so much that individual people can and will do. But Bernie Sanders proved that 27 bucks a piece, you can raise a lot of money. And our brothers and sisters in labor who take normal, everyday, regular, hardworking people's money and aggregate it together into big money. They understand that too. So I'll end by saying this because I think this is the last question. There are some of you who are never going to support me. There are some of you who have supported me for a long time. Some of you who are friends of mine. Some of you who aren't. Our fight is before us but we are the beacon to the United States of America. All across our nation, Democrats and progressives are looking to us for leadership. They're feeling heartbroken. They're feeling frightened. They're feeling scared. They're feeling vulnerable. And we're the ones who can help lead them out of the darkness. I'll end by saying this. In 1994, Pete Wilson ran the first Donald Trump campaign. You might remember it, dark, furtive people running across the five freeway, and a voice over that intoned, they keep coming and coming and coming. And he won, and the Republicans won, took control of the legislature, and they never won a thing since. I believe, I hope, and I pray that that's what Donald Trump did to the Republican Party this year. They had their Pete Wilson moment. And from here, it's only upward. If we work together, if we build together, if we include everybody, if we make sure that our party looks like this room looks, like California looks, like America looks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eric. I now have an elephant question for Kimberly, and you might want to, Eric turned his into, uh, once he answered the question, uh, into sort of a closing statement, so you might want to do the same thing. So come on up. The question is, who funds Ellis's expensive campaign and why no support from Bernie or Bernie supporters? In the course of the year that I've been running this campaign, I've raised over a quarter of a million dollars. That money has been raised by 500 unique and individual donors, most of which have come in donations of $100 or less. Uh, and so in terms of an expensive campaign, the truth of the matter is that um, running to be the chair of the party and running to be um, uh, a party elected, um, there are no contribution limits. And you know what else? There are no reporting requirements. Uh, beginning in January, we will be recording and reporting all of our donors who have given to uh, my campaign. And I have a challenge to my opponent to do the same. And in terms of Bernie supporters, I have many Bernie supporters who have given to this campaign and who are in this room tonight. I believe, again, as this party stands right now, it is run by and it is controlled by special interests and big money. It is important that we get money out of politics. As Democrats, as Democrats, we say that we are for getting money out of politics and that we are for clean campaigns. But do we really believe that? I have a question in terms of the party being investigated for money laundering. 
Uh, the question I have is, as vice chair, what kind of oversight were you providing uh, to the party? Uh, the other thing I would like to uh, add is that uh, if it is being investigated for money laundering, uh, well, it's probably because we've been laundering money. Uh, and so, again, if we, it's time to, to, to tell some hard truths about what's going on here. This, the line in the sand has been drawn, okay? This is about the soul of the Democratic Party. This is about who we are. It is time for us. There is one thing that is clear. The rest of this country is looking to California to lead. We are not a follower. We do not follow trends, we set trends. This is an opportunity for California to set the trend of remaking, redefining, and reimagining what it means to be a Democrat. That means giving the party back to the people, getting rid of special interests, big money, big pharma, big tobacco, and big oil. It is time for us to get back to doing the business of the people. I'd like to thank both of you for coming, and I really appreciate the fact that, I, that you answered some questions that I think may have been a little tougher than you've had earlier in the day. But I, I want to say from, my, in all sincerity, these are the things that, that's, this is the buzz that's been going around, and I'm really glad you got the opportunity to address it. So thank you both.